Hey guys, Chris and Joe here with the Good Old Gamer, and today Intel has taken the lid off of their new uh, Broadwell E chips. So their new 10 core 20 thread monster has been unleashed into the wild. Benchmarks are starting to surface on the internet, and well, honestly, it looks like it's better than I thought it was going to be. I, Broadwell on the uh, you know mainstream platform was never released because it was such a horrible disappointment Intel basically threw it out there for OEMs they used it in the laptop market and tablets and stuff but they never released chips that you could just go out to the store and buy because it was maybe three or four percent better IPC over Haswell it was a terrible disappointment and Intel just swept it under the rug and released uh, Skylake just mere weeks after it I'm happy to say that it looks like the Broadwell E, they did enough fine-tuning to the architecture to where the IPC is significantly better. Um, I'm looking at limited sample size of the, you know, single-threaded performance here, you know, in comparison setting. But it looks like it is much better and much more efficient. Uh, so that's very good. My big question is, is anybody really going to spend $2,000 on a on a processor i don't think there will be anybody um that's or very few that are going to be willing to spend that kind of money on a processor i mean if you have that kind of money sure it doesn't matter um if you could just throw it around there and buy this new processor i guess you could say you've got the new 6950x and congrats but what the hell does that mean for you? Uh, in my opinion, it doesn't mean a whole lot. It doesn't look like if you are a gamer that you are going to get some sort of amazing performance out of this thing that you couldn't get anywhere else. Number one, because most games are not going to be using multi-threading, even though it's definitely becoming more common to see games with multi-threading. Um, but even then, not optimized for 10 cores or 20 threads. Oh, that's so, absolutely not. I mean, they, they barely use uh, eight threads at this right. point. So you ha you're going to have a lot of extra horsepower, I guess, if you want to put it that way. Um, that's really being underutilized or really not even utilized at all. So it's a really expensive processor that will not do any better than a processor like the 6700K or even their low-end 6800K Broadwell e-chip now. Um, probably going to serve you better to spend a lot less money to get the same performance if you're a gamer. I imagine there are other processes though you could do with that new processor the 6950x and get your 10 cores and 20 threads i guess uh maybe some video encoding and stuff if you've got something that can take advantage of all those threads but uh that's beyond the scope of what i know well i mean even if you're that big of a content creator at basically two thousand dollars you could buy uh, a much better xeon processor you can get a 16 core 32 thread chip or you can invest that money, <clears throat> excuse me, it's early in the morning, we're still waking up. Uh, or you can invest that money into the new 22 core 44 thread chip, which will absolutely destroy the 6950X. I mean, you know, if you need that much threading, why wouldn't you go with something that's either a little bit more money or possibly even cheaper that will get you even more threading? You well, could probably build several computers with lower chips to do more at once than you could spending a $2,000 on a processor. Yeah, it, it's kind of an odd fish here. I mean, I can understand the one thing that I can see this chip really being good for is for virtualization. <laughs> if you want to build one PC uh, and have your whole home run off of it, meaning instead of building a gaming PC or a dedicated PC in each room, you put one computer together and then you just stick a monitor in the different rooms and you need it to run a bunch of different stuff. I can understand that because you could basically turn this chip into five Core i3 chips. You know, so each setup would have its own dedicated piece of it. However, there's not a lot of people that are going to do that considering you could probably build five Core i3 setups for less than $2,000. So, exactly. And by the way, it does go back, is, I can't remember, did, is the X99 platform for the old Broadwells? Are they uh, yeah, using the yeah, same it, platform? It's backwards compatible, which is nice for those who already have it. Right, but it sucks for anybody who maybe got an i6500 or something like that, you know, however long ago, and maybe thought, oh, I'm going to upgrade because now you're going to need a new motherboard. The only nice thing about it beyond that, it goes back to the X99, is that it also now supports DDR4. But again, 
it's going to cost a lot more money than you need to spend. And you're not going to get, even compared to the 6800K, you know, we, we've only seen limited benchmarks right now. We really don't know what kind of overclocking capability it's going to have. But what I'm looking at right now doesn't appear to match, or even the i7-6850K, which is like five $600. Um, it looks like it'd be comparable to the 6700K in terms of clock speed. And the 6700K, or even the 6600K, are extremely overclockable. Um, so we, it kind of remains to be seen exactly how well these are going to do. But I just I don't understand what exactly they think these processors are doing like what 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 need are they filling that the 6700k or even the 6600k is not filling well personally That's what I can't figure my out. real problem with this whole platform is this is uh intel's enthusiast high-end enthusiast platform i forgot there's actually an acronym for it but i forgot exactly what it is regardless ever since the x58 uh, platform, which you're still using to this day. Oh, yeah. uh, I mean, it was fantastic. It was by far and away the most powerful thing that the main sh that consumers could buy. Nowadays, we're talking about Broadwell. Broadwell is a two-year-old chip. Cabby Lake, the successor to Skylake, should be launching about the same time as these chips, according to uh, sources. I mean, we're going to be two generations ahead. So, yes, okay, those chips aren't going to be as multi-threaded as these. They're not going to be 10 core, 20 threads. But we're talking about two generations ahead of IPC improvements. I just don't know what Intel's thinking. They need to just skip ahead. These chips need to be the Cabby Lakes, and then Skylake needs to be starting to launch on the mainstream. They need to get ahead of their mainstream if they want to make a $2,000 chip viable. I mean, I'm not going to buy old technology, even though it's definitely been revamped to be much better than the original. Yeah, absolutely. Broadway. But I'm not going to spend $2,000 or even $1,000 or, hell, even that the 6800K, $434, which is more than the 6700K, which is newer technology than the 6800K. It's like, why would you do that? That's my personal problem uh, with this particular platform. But being that I'm primarily a gamer, I mean, obviously I do content creation for YouTube, but you don't need anything that fast to make YouTube videos. No. You don't need anything that fast to really do video encoding. You just let it run overnight if it's going to be really intensive. Yeah, I mean, the only thing I can think is that AMD is going to have their new processors coming out, and, they, and one of the areas that AMD is really forged ahead is the use of their cores, um, trying to make them more mainstream, and perhaps this is their way of trying to beat them to market with their version of, you know, large amount of, of a large amount of cores on one processor, uh, upwards of ten fucking cores. Um, so it's that's the only thing I could think. But I think they're pricing themselves out. I, I just even AMD's cores generally are going to be comparable in price and this is just now coming out like there, there are they're kind of behind in terms of number of cores although clock speeds and whatnot you could argue efficiency instructions per clock but um that's the that's the only possible thing i think is they're trying to beat the new amd processor to the market well then they I, I don't think amd is even going to be able to compete with these i i, I think they're going to put a lot of pressure on their mainstream class i don't think they're going to be able to touch these higher end chips but You're this is all speculation right. there, there's no real way to know um, I personally feel that AMD is going to put a $300 chip out there that's 8-core, 16-thread, and probably runs at 4 gigahertz, And that's really going to put a lot of pressure on, you know, the 6700K to perform. They're, they'll need to lower their prices uh, to compete. That's my thought and hope. We'll have to wait and see. But that's about all I have. I mean, I just don't see any need for these chips unless you're doing massive virtualization. That I can understand. But for a home user, how much virtualization are you really going to be doing? That's, that's just where I'm at with it. Um, when you can build literally four or five computers for the same price as just the processor, you're probably better off just doing that. Yeah, you know, and even if you look at other things, like uh, you know, if you look at the information, they talk about the new X99 boards and they're featuring U.2 ports. And uh, or however you want to say it, uh, Thunderbolt 3, 40 PCIe lanes. Um, you know, it's like that's all great, but to the vast and I mean vast majority of users, that is useless, utterly useless. 
most people will not take up all those uh, PCI lands or PCI Express lands, and a lot of people don't even know what Thunderbolt 3 is, you know? Uh, and the U.2, or like I said, however you pronounce it, because I honestly don't know the common pronunciation. I'm assuming that's it. it. Honestly, I only recently found out that was a thing. So, I mean, it's really cool in in a sense, just like, holy crap, this kind of stuff's out there, but it means absolutely nothing to me and probably most mainstream gamers except to say, oh, well, now I have a 6700K and there's a 6800K and a 6850. God damn it, I can't keep up. They they just, it doesn't fucking matter for you. That's the thing. So Yeah, it's, considering, you know, like I said before, you know, the Broadwell's old, it's old architecture. Like I said, I'm still surprised that it's actually running as well as it can, but you're still better served, especially if you're a gamer. Get a 6700K. Don't waste your time. Um, what was or it? if you have one, just stick with it. Oh, you're absolutely. not getting anything new out of this. Yeah. Don't, now, if you have an X99 platform already, you might as well take out your Haswell E-chip and throw a Broadwell E-chip in there when they get a little bit cheaper down the road. There's no reason to run out and go buy one right now. But, uh, yeah, Digital Foundry did a uh, comparison between the 6700K, the 5960X, and the, uh, I think the 58, the 20 K and, uh, they found out that the 6,700 K was far superior for gaming. So I would expect that this would still remain the case with Broadwell. All right. Yeah. I mean, that makes sense. I'm not shocked at all. And I mean, it's cool, but I think it's just flash, not enough substance here. Nothing anybody can really use in my opinion. Yeah. Not a home user anyway. Alrighty, guys, that'll do it for us. You guys have a great day. Yep, see you guys later.